So today I'm going to be teaching you how to read the error code on a Beko WM or WMB model. And to start with, let's show you how you read them. So there are two ways of doing this. So first method, which is probably the most obvious, is to go into service mode by pressing and holding start while turning the knob one to the left, right rather, and then release when you get E dash dash. Now, if you have any stored error codes, this will say E01, for example, E02, E17, um, up to 18, these go. So, 1 to 10, and then 17 and 18, that's how they go. Obviously, I don't have any stored, so it just says E dash dash. If yours just says E dash dash, you don't need to have, you don't have anything to worry about. So, to demonstrate the other one, let's put it into a quick spin and drain. Now, while it's in a cycle, you can in fact do error code reading by pressing hold and spin and pre-wash at the same time. Now watch the display. You get E dash dash or it will appear as um, E18 for example um, or E02 it might do. Once you do that be aware that it will be cleared so you need to be fast at reading whatever it says because when you next do it it will go back to E dash dash. Same with the service mode thing, even if you don't run it all the way through, as soon as you see that error message, you would have cleared it by default. Anyway, let's tie it off. And now I'm going to teach you what each of the error codes mean. So, if your display at any point says E01, then it's indicative of maybe an NTC problem. Um, so you should take the thermostat at the back of the drum. I mean, at the back of the heater, um, should be in the. It should be in line with the heater. Um, obviously, down here it would be, but at the back of the drum. Um, check the resistance of the thermistor. Apparently, it should be four thousand seven hundred ohms at twenty-five Celsius. So, make sure it reads correctly. If it doesn't read correctly, it's probably worth replacing the thermostat. And if that doesn't fix your problem, maybe try the heating element. Or worst case scenario, maybe the PCB just needs replacing. If you get EO2, it means the machine isn't heating at all. So there's either a loose wire connection, where maybe the heating element wire's fallen out, for example, or maybe the element's just blown and you're not getting any continuity for it because it's just stopped working. It can be a PCB issue as well, the EO2 error. So if you've replaced the element, if you've checked the wiring and replaced the wiring, the PCB is the culprit. As on most of these errors, you will notice the PCB could be an issue with pretty much any of them. EO3 is indicative of too much heat, so it means it won't stop heating when it's meant to. For example, if you select a 40 wash and it keeps heating beyond 40, and the thermostat picks that up, then you're going to get EO3. Now, that could be itself an issue with the thermostat detecting the wrong temperature. The best way to do that is grab one of these temperature guns and see what temperature it is inside the machine. And if you selected 40 and it's say 70, then you've obviously got a thermostat issue or a heating element issue maybe. There's also a possibility of the wire being disconnected from the thermostat, that can happen. And that might be why it's heating too much because it doesn't realise that it's um, disconnected. And if if replacing the thermostat, if replacing the element, checking the wirings, if none of that works, it's a PCB problem again. EO4 can mean several things. Now, the most common one is that there's no water detected in the machine. The easy fix to that, make sure all the taps are on down here, which you should be able to see in short just about and make sure that there's no kinks in the pipe and a kink is like um, a dent in it. And it can happen if the machine jumps at one point and then shifts back like I've had this machine do. That can happen, uh, but it can kink the pipe. Just make sure you unkink it carefully and then try it again. If it still doesn't work, you may want to check the pressure switch because what can happen is detergent buildup or dirt buildup can actually block the pressure switch hose and then obviously the pressure switch can't detect how much water is in the machine. Um, can also replace the pressure switch, I don't know how much they cost, but 
it might be worth a go replacing the pressure switch seeing if that is the issue or maybe just replace the pressure switch hose if you suspect there's a blockage in there somewhere and you can't get it out um eo4 can also be related to the door now if the door's jammed in any way then it can tell you eo4 so the simple solution to that is don't overload the machine EO5 means the machine can't drain in the allocated time, which I believe is six minutes for these machines, but I may be confusing it with another machine. So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, you're gonna wanna check the pump filter down here for any blockages or any anything maybe blocking the impeller from turning. If, it, if the pump's not running at all during the drain cycle, which you can check by obviously putting it on a drain only, then you wanna, you're you going to want to replace the pump because the pump's gone if it's not rotating at all. And then that will solve your issue, hopefully. If not, then you're probably looking at a PCB problem again. Now, EO6 is a motor tachometer fault, most likely. You'll, the obvious sign of a motor tachometer fault is if the drum is suddenly going up to a ridiculous speed like that when it should be washing um, and without warning as well and the machine may be jumping a bit because obviously it's not supposed to be going up that fast during the wash and you can check that by obviously putting it on a wash if it if it is doing that you're going to want to replace the motor tachometer coil or maybe just the entire motor itself if you can't find a tachometer coil um, EO7 is a pressure switch for most likely and replace the pressure switch I'll put a known good one in and replace the hose as well for the pressure switch just to make sure that that's not causing the problem if that doesn't fix it then again you're looking at a PCB issue now EO8 is similar to EO4 in the, te in the sense that it also could mean that there's no water detected in the machine itself now this can mean any of a few things so first off it can mean the valves are faulty and they're not letting water in when they should be or the inlet filter where the pipe when the inlet pipe goes in that may be clogged and might not be allowing enough water through so it's not filling up fast enough um, make sure the taps are actually on themselves so make sure they're on fully and make sure your pressure's high enough for a washing machine to be able to use effectively Again, like with EO4, make sure there's no kinks in the inlet pipe, so no bends at all, nothing stopping it from, nothing stopping the water from coming through. Um, it could also be a PCB issue, so if you've tried everything else, then you might want to have a look at the PCB or get get a specialist to have a look at the PCB. It's probably the safest idea. Right, EO9 means that there is an, a fault with the door interlock. Now on mine. The door interlock has a issue where it won't lock the door. Um, I can show you now by just throwing it on to spin and drain. Start, you hear it lock, and it won't lock the door, but you can get it to start, like so. So, that may be a symptom of a broken door lock. You should replace it if you can open the drawers during the cycle, definitely. Especially if you have young children around. Now, sometimes it does the opposite and it won't allow you to open the door. But, but it will start. I've had a machine where the interlock just stays jammed shut. That was a hot one, but it can happen on any machine. So if your door is just staying shut, Going to want to take the interlock off and put a known good one in and make sure that that doesn't do the same thing if that does the same thing it might be that the pressure switch is detecting that the machine's full of water when it's not um or it might be that the pcb's got an issue in the i think there might there's probably a relay which controls the interlock i'm not quite sure how that system works but just check that the interlock itself is not faulty before you do anything with the pcb now, E10 simply means the door's jammed. So, same as EO5, uh, not EO5, EO4 rather, pretty much. Um, E11 is a motor fault. 
not necessarily a motor tech or motor fault, just a motor fault in general. So it may mean the brushes need replacing. It may mean that there's no current going to the motor at all, or it may mean there's too much current going to the motor. It's worthwhile checking the PCB and the motor control board or the inverter board if your machine's an inverter model, as I know some excellences are. E17 means that the machine has been overdosed with detergent and has been unable to get rid of it in a few emergency rinses. So, and it's overdosed to the point where it can't even flush it out on the emergency rinses. And I don't know how anyone would manage that because it, they're relatively good at getting enough suds out because they spin like they pretty much spin anything out these machines. Um, or they just do an anti suds unnecessarily long. Or they just do an emergency rinse if they can't get it out by anti suds. So I don't really know how they do that. But anyway, if you get the E17 area, you may want to check the pump because that can cause the issue sometimes if it can't drain effectively. And then obviously the suds start foaming up when it's trying to spin. Um, but run the machine through a few rinse cycles if you notice that the drum's absolutely full of suds. Um, and don't and use a lot less detergent in future if you're managing to get E17. And the final one, E18, means that it was unable to complete the final spin. So you're going to want to redistribute the load inside um, because it's caused by an imbalance more often than not. So try taking out heavier items and just spinning the heavier items separately because sometimes that's the problem. It's got heavier items and light items and it's not able to balance them out safely enough to spin. So take the heavier items out, leave the lighter items in, spin the lighter items on their own or just half and half the load if they're all pretty much the same weight because it needs to have enough space for the clothes to tumble in order to balance them out. Um, I know people who put clothes in and then push a duvet on top. Obviously that's never gonna redistribute. So if you get an E18 error, always redistribute the load inside or just take half out. Um, now it's rare to get an E18 error on these. You'd have to put something extremely unbalanced in, like so much so that it's like, no, I'm not even gonna attempt that. I managed to get E18 when I did a bath nut on the wash test, but I've done bedding and towels, which has been far worse in balances than the bath nut on towels. I mean bath nut on wash test, and it's spun it no problem. Well, I say no problem, it's been jumping around. So, yeah, not sure on that one. Either way, the machine will do 16 attempts at balancing, and if on the 16th attempt it still deems it unsafe to spin, even to 600 RPM, it will just cancel the spin entirely and be like, nope, you've got to redistribute it yourself. And in, what you can do to prevent that is load similar weighted items together and don't overload it. So leave it enough space to redistribute the clothes. You should leave a hands width that way of space between the top of the drum, like not the drum rim, the top of the drum itself and the clothes that you're washing so that they get washed effectively and spun effectively as well. Well, that's all the error codes for Beko WM slash WMB series. This also applies for the excellence. Um, newer models I'm not so sure about, but older models definitely. In newer models there may be a few differences and obviously between excellence and WMB, WM models, between all of them, because of how many years they span over, there may be slight differences. So always check your owner manual before you attempt any repairs. And if you're not confident with repairing your machine, always call the specialist technicians because they know what they're doing. Don't ever attempt something that you're not confident doing. Oh, well, hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, then please leave a like. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment. If I've done anything wrong, feel free to corrects me and I will research and look into it further for you so yeah I'll see you in the next video bye bye